EEG electrode caps are among the most widely used EEG application systems. The precise measurement of the electrode position enables a customized EEG recording for the desired objective. GVB GLIMIT has a variety of EEG caps in rubber or silicon with two, three or four longitudinal bands or with headbands. Depending on which EEG cap is to be used, the size can be modified to requirements. All EEG caps are designed to enable bridge, fungus or Z-electrodes to be applied according to the International 1020 system. We will now demonstrate the preparation, measurement and fitting of an EEG cap using a demonstration model. Measuring of the position of the electrodes is performed based on four known points on the human head. These points are the nasian, the inian and the preauricular points on the left ear A1 and the right ear A2. As both the nasian and the inian are well known palpable points, let's begin with the preauricular points A1 and A2. You can feel the points at the entrance to each ear. Having the patient open and close their mouth will enable you to determine these points precisely. Once you have determined A1 and A2, you should start to measure the first intermediate marks. To do this, first measure the distance from the nasian to the inian. Hold the measuring tape in position and make the first intermediate mark for the C-set point at the halfway mark. Then make the intermediate mark for point OZ. To do this, use the tape measure to calculate 10% of the total distance from the inian and make the mark at this point. Now let's make the intermediate mark for the point PZ. To do this, measure 20% of the total distance from point CZ towards the inian. Next, you need to determine the position of the intermediate mark for point N, for which you again measure 10% of the total distance, but this time starting from the nasian and make the mark. Then you make a mark for point FZ by again measuring 20% of the total distance from CZ, this time, however, in the direction of the nasian. Here, once again, a summary of the first section. Measure the distance from the nasian to the inian. The total measurement in this example is 38 cm. In order to determine the points, you will need a partial measurement of 10% and a partial measurement of 20% of the total distance nasian-inian. In our example, these measurements are 3.8 and 7.6 cm. Place the first mark for the point CZ at the halfway point of the total distance. In our example here, 19 cm. Now make the mark for point OZ. For this, 10% of the total distance, in example 3.8 cm, is measured from the inian. Next, make the mark for the point PZ. For this, measure 20% of the distance, 7.6 cm, from point CZ towards the inian. Now follows the mark for point N. For this, 10% of the total distance is again measured 3.8 cm from the nasian. Finally, it's the mark for point FZ for which you once again measure 20% of the total distance, here once again 7.6 cm, but from point CZ towards the nasian. To check, you can measure again the distances from N to FZ and OZ to PZ. These distances must be also 20% of the total distance, in example 7.6 cm. This means the first partial marks are fixed. We will continue with the second step of the application. In the second step, you measure the total distance from point A1 to A2, whereby you will need to take the tape measure over the intermediate mark CZ. Hold the measuring tape in position and make the final mark at the point of intersection for point CZ at the halfway point between A1 and A2. This is the position for the first electrode CZ.
Now you need to make the intermediate mark for point T3, for which you measure 10% of the total distance from A1 to A2, starting from A1. Mark this point. Then you need to make the intermediate mark for point C3. This time, however, you measure 20% of the distance from point CZ to A1. The points T4 and C4 are on the other side of the head. For point T4, you again measure 10% of the total distance from A2 and make this intermediate mark. You determine the intermediate mark for point C4 by measuring 20% of the total distance from point CZ towards A2. To summarize the second step, measure the distance from A1 to A2. The measurement in this case is 36 cm. To determine these points, you will need partial measurements of 10% and 20% of the total distance from A1 to A2. In our example, these partial distances are 3.6 and 7.2 cm. Now make the final mark for point C Z, the intermediate mark for which you made in the first step, at the halfway point of the total distance. In our example, this is 19 cm. Now make the intermediate mark for point T3. To do this, 10% of the total distance, an example 3.6 cm, starting from A1. Now make the intermediate mark for point C3. To do this, measure 20% of the total distance, in this case 7.2 cm, from point C Z towards A1. Now the intermediate mark for point T4 is made. To do this, again 10% of the total distance, 3.6 cm in this case, is measured this time starting from A2. Lastly, you make the intermediate mark for point C4. To do this, you again measure 20% of the distance, an example 7.2 cm, from point C Z towards A2. To double check, you can measure the distances from T3 to C3 and from T4 to C4 again. These distances must be also 20% of the total distance, an example 7.2 cm. The first final mark and further intermediate marks have now been made. We will now continue with the process. In the next step, we will determine the endpoints which are along the circumference of the head. To do this, you first determine the endpoint N on the patient's forehead. For this, take a pen or a similar object and hold it vertically between the center of the tip and the root of the patient's nose. Mark the point of intersection for the endpoint N determined in this way. Now measure the circumference of the patient's head. To do this, run the measuring tape from point N to the intermediate mark T3, then to the intermediate mark OZ, then to the intermediate mark T4, then forwards again to point N. Place the measuring tape on point N, double checking that it is positioned correctly. In order for the next end point to be marked correctly, the tape must pass over every intermediate mark above this point. If the measuring tape is positioned correctly, make the final mark for point OZ at the back of the patient's head. Do this by halving the circumference. Place the measuring tape on point N again and take it over the intermediate mark T3 continuing to OZ. The measuring tape must run above the marks. It is important to measure this distance again to ensure that you don't accidentally measure 10 and 20% of the entire circumference of the head, which would result in you placing the markings in the wrong place. Fix the measuring tape and make the final mark for point T3 at the halfway point of the distance between N and OZ. Now make the final mark for point FP1. To do this, measure 10% of the distance on the measuring tape from point N. Then make the final mark for point F7. Do this by measuring 20% of the distance from point T3 towards point N. Next, you need to make the final mark for point O1 at the back of the head. To do this, again measure 10% of the distance from point OZ. 
Then make the final mark for point T5, for which you measure 20% of the distance from point T3 towards OZ. Now place the measuring tape on the other side of the head at point N and take it over intermediate mark T4 again to point OZ. Again, make sure that the measuring tape runs above the intermediate marks. All through, this distance is the same length. It is, as mentioned it before, important to measure this distance again to prevent mistakes occurring with the 1020 marks. Position the measuring tape and make the final mark for point T4 at the halfway point of the distance you have just measured N O Z. Make the final mark for point FP2 by measuring 10% of the distance on the measuring tape from point N. Then make the final mark for point F8 by measuring 20% of the distance from point T4 towards point N. Now you need to make the final mark for point O2. This point is also on the back of the head. Measure 10% of the distance from point OZ. Lastly, make the final mark for point T6, for which you measure 20% of the distance from point T4 towards OZ. To summarize the third step once again. Measure the circumference of the head from point N via T3 to OZ, then to T4 and back to point N. Make sure that the measuring tape runs above these intermediate marks. The measurement for the circumference of the head in this example is 60 cm. Now make the final mark for point OZ on the back of the head at 50% 30 cm of the measured distance. Use the measuring tape again. Place the measuring tape from point N via T3 to OZ. This measurement is 30 cm as you've already determined. Using the tape again is actually only important to ensure that you relate the partial distances of 10 and 20% to this distance N OZ and not to the entire circumference of the head. The partial distances that we therefore need in this step are 3 and 6 cm. Now make the final mark for point T3 at the halfway point of the measure distance. In our example this would be 15 cm. Now make the final mark for point FP1 by measuring 10% of the distance, in example 3 cm from point N. Now we need to make the final mark for point F7. To do this, measure 20% of the distance, in this case 6 cm, from point T3 towards N. Now we'll mark the final mark for point O1. To do this, again measure 10% of the total distance, 3 cm in our example, this time starting from OZ. As the last final mark for the left side of the head, make the mark for point T5. To do this, again measure 20% of the distance, in this case 6 cm, from point T3 towards OZ. The final marks for the left side of the head have now been made. Now place a measuring tape on point N again and this time run it over the intermediate mark from T4 to OZ. In our example this distance is also 30 cm. The 10 and 20 percent distances are therefore 3 and 6 cm. Now make the final mark for point T4 at 50 percent of the measured distance. In our example this is 15 cm. Now make the final mark for point FP2, for which you measure again 10% of the distance, 3 cm in our example, starting from point N. Now make the final mark for point F8. To do this, again measure 20% of the distance, 6 cm in our example, from point T4 towards N. Next we need to make the final mark for point O2. To do this, measure 10% of the total distance, 3 cm, this time starting from point OZ. The last final mark for the right side of the head is point T6. To make this mark, again measure 20% of the distance, 6 cm in this case, from point T4 towards OZ. This concludes the final marks for the right side of the head.
As a safeguard, you can measure the distances from FP1 to F7, from T5 to O1, from FP2 to F8 and from T6 to O2 once again. These distances must be also 20% of total distance, in this example therefore 6 cm. All the positions for the final marks have now been determined. Now we can continue with our procedure. In the next step, we'll make the marks on the intermediate line on the left side of the head. Place the measuring tape on the FP1 mark and run it over the intermediate mark C3 to O1. Make the final mark for point C3 at the halfway point of the measured distance. Along this line, the markings will no longer be made in 10-20 steps. Instead, they will be measured in quarter steps. Now, make the intermediate mark for point F3 by measuring a quarter of the total distance from point FP1. Now, make the intermediate mark for point P3 by again measuring a quarter of the total distance, this time, however, starting from point O1. The next step is to place the measuring tape on the FP2 mark and run it over the intermediate mark C4 until to point O2. Make the final mark for point C4 at the halfway point of the measured distance. On this line too, the marks are made in quarter steps. Now make the intermediate mark for point F4 by measuring a quarter of the total distance from point FP2. Now make the intermediate mark for point P4 by measuring a quarter of the total distance, this time however starting from point O2. To summarize the fourth step. Measure the distance from FP1 about the existing intermediate mark C3 to O1. In our example this distance is 26 cm. Now make the final mark for point C3 by making a point of intersection at the halfway point of the measured distance, in this case 13 cm. The remaining points on this inside line are determined not using the 10 and 20% measurements, but instead using quarters of the distance, an example 25%. In our example this measurement is 6.5 cm. Now make the intermediate mark for point F3 by measuring a quarter of the distance 6.5 cm from FP1. The last point on the inside line on this side of the head is point P3. Mark this by measuring a quarter of the distance 6.5 cm from point O1. This concludes the marking for the left side. We will now determine the points for the right side of the head. Measure the distance from FP2 to O2 about the existing C4 intermediate mark. In our example this distance is also 26 cm. Now make the final mark for point C4 by making a point of intersection at the halfway point of the measured distance, again 30 cm in our example. Now we make the intermediate mark for point F4 by measuring a quarter of the distance, 6.5 cm in our example, from FP2. The last point on the inside line on the right side of the head is point P4. Mark this point by measuring a quarter of the distance, 6.5 cm in our example, this time starting from point O2. All the markings for the left side and right side of the head have now been made. Let's continue with the last step. In the last step of the measuring process, place the measuring tape at point F7 and run it over the intermediate mark FZ until to point F8. On this line too, the positions are marked using quarter steps. Make the final mark for point FZ at the halfway point of the measured distance. Next, make the final mark for point F3 by measuring a quarter of the distance from point F7. Now, 
makes the final mark for point F4, for which you also measure a quarter of this distance, this time starting from point F8. For the final line, place the measuring tape at point T5 and run it over the intermediate mark PZ to point T6. First, make the final mark for point PZ at the halfway point of the measured distance. Then, make the final mark for point P3 by measuring a quarter of the distance from point T5. Finally, mark point P4 by measuring a quarter of the total distance, this time starting from point T6. Here the summary of the fifth and final section. Measure the distance from F7 about the point Fz which is already marked to F8. The distance in our example is also 26 cm. At first make the final mark for the point Fz by making an intersection mark halfway along the measured distance here 13 cm. The remaining points are determined by using quarters of the distance too. In our example this measurement is 6.5 cm. Make the final mark for the point F3 by measuring a quarter of the total distance, in example 6.5 cm, from F7. The last point on this line is the point F4. This is marked by measuring a quarter of the distance, 6.5 cm, from point F8. This means that all marks for the forward half of the head have been made and now we will make the points for the back half of the head. Measure the distance from T5 about the point Tz, which is already marked, to T6. The distance in the example is once again 26 cm. Then make the final mark for the point Pz by once again making an intersection mark halfway along the measured distance. Next comes the final mark for the point P3, made by measuring a quarter of the distance in example 6.5 cm from point T5. The last point is point P4, for which you once again measure a quarter of the distance, 6.5 cm, this time however from point T6. This means that all marks for the forward and back half of the head have been made. Now we will show you the right placement of the cap and the connection.